Hey guys, this is Gary from My Psychology. Today we are going to talk about the true definition of depression. Let's begin. For those who are not familiar with depression, you will get a short summary of depression in this video. For those who already know about depression, perhaps this can be a short revision for you. Let's start with myths. Because it is always easier to understand facts by looking at the most popular Myths? Myths? Myths. <coughs> Depression is a mental illness. It affects your mood, your thoughts, and behavior. It's not something that we can just control through willpower. We can't just think positively and suddenly become better. Asking people with depression to just snap out of it is just like asking people with a cold to stop sneezing. Asking them to just hold it in, be strong and their coal will magically go away. Counter-terrorists win! Yo! Hey, don't go near him. Uh. He depressed one. Uh. Later he will get depressed too. That's not exactly the way depression works. Is depression really contagious? The answer is, it is complicated. Of course, depression is not like a flu virus that will spread through the air. It's not about physical distance or anything like that. It is because mood and emotions are contagious. Remember those video challenges when you're trying so hard not to laugh while watching another person laughing so crazy? Same thing here. You feel sad with your friend when he or she just broke up with their partner. When they are angry at someone else, you feel angry too, even though you don't know what really made them angry. This is empathy. The ability to understand and share feelings with others. But, will you get depression when those who are near you or close to you are clinically depressed? Probably not. Nope. Just like a close friend who has diabetes because he or she had unhealthy eating habit. You might share the same habit, but you won't necessarily become diabetic. Same goes for depression. There are actually a lot of factors that can lead to depression. Yo! There's a huge difference between being depressed and having depression. Being depressed is a mood while depression is a mental illness. We must have felt depressed at some point in our life due to a breakup, a death in the family, some sort of misfortune, or you have committed something unforgivable. However, just by having negative feelings doesn't lead you to have depression. Similarly, just because someone who is positive, cheerful, or look happy doesn't mean that he or she is immune from depression. So what causes depression? There's no one or direct cause of depression. It's always a combination of risk factors, including family psychiatric history, low social support, substance use, stress, etc. Now, if you want a list of symptoms for depression, you can always refer to DSM, the Bible for psychology students and mental health professionals. According to the DSM, there are nine symptoms for depression. To be clinically diagnosed with depression, the person would need to have at least 5 out of 9 symptoms for 2 weeks or more. And these symptoms would have seriously affected the person's daily functioning. But please, don't just go and read the symptoms online and diagnose by yourself. We strongly discourage self-diagnosis. And we encourage you to seek support from mental health professionals because they are qualified to properly assess your condition. However, you can take note of these symptoms as alarm signals, such as feeling down persistently, no energy to work, can't fall asleep, etc. And if these symptoms are disturbing your daily life, get help immediately. I just want to let you know that depression is actually very common. It's nothing shameful to talk about, even if you are experiencing it now. We know that because among the members of my psychology, some of us had friends or families who had depression. We share our experiences with the ones we trust and we learn how to go through the tough time. You might ask, is it scary? And I can tell you that, yes, it is very scary. Seeing someone you care so much about suffer while you can do nothing to fix it instantly. You feel helpless and hopeless. But do you know what is scarier? The lack of understanding towards depression. We were much younger during that time and we don't know why our loved ones behave like that. We don't know where to look for help. At the same time, our relatives started to tell us what kind of food to eat if we have depression. 
and our neighbors advise us to seek help from the street doctors. We are easily influenced by others if we are ignorant. We will take their advice and delay the treatment process, causing our loved ones to suffer more. This is much scarier. Help is out there, always available. But misconceptions is like a huge wall blocking us from reaching help. This is one of the reasons we wanted to make this video. We want to spread the right information about depression and you are now much more prepared for it. With you, my psychology. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you wish to break the wall of misconceptions, don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and families. Comment below and let us know what you would like to know in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe our channel for more psychology videos. See you in the next episode.